Hello, hello, this is Jay from the future. I sort of fallen into uh, doing a vlog of Canada Reads 2021. Uh, I was just sort of filming it for my own fun because I'm the kind of maniac who films himself reacting to stuff even when he doesn't pretend, intend on actually releasing it. But as I've gone along, I've gotten more and more enthusiastic with this year of Canada Reads and having done the whole thing, I am now like, oh boy, I want to share my reactions with everybody in exhaustive detail, which is what I'm going to do here. Uh, Canada Reads is a four-day event where uh, five books are set, set in the, in, in a, five Canadian books are set against each other in a, in an auditorium, five books enter, one book, one book remains, um, where in the best case scenario, uh, the uh, panelists uh, will defend will defend uh, their their chosen book. Uh, this year, it is Olympian and broadcaster Rosie Adehi champion championing the Midnight Bargain by C. L. Polk. Uh, Singer songwriter Scott Hellman champions Two Trees Make a Forest by Jessica L. Lee. Uh, actor and filmmaker Devery Jacobs champions champions Johnny Appleseed by Joshua Whitehead. Actor Paul Sun Hung Lee champions Hench by Natalie Zena uh, Zena Zena Walshots Walshots. And chef, recording artist, and TV host Roger Mooking champions Butter Honey Pig Bread by Fr Fr Francesca Awisia. Uh, uh, and uh, yes, they go at it. Uh, there's some fun uh, readerly readerly debates that go on in this, and I'm 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 happy to share it with you. So yes, let's get started with my reactions to day one. Each day, one book gets eliminated until day four. There are only two books standing, and which one will win? Dun, dun, dun. By the way, I haven't read any of these books. I'm strictly going into it as an enthusiast of, uh, of books, but not, I haven't, haven't read any of these books. I'd find it too heartbreaking if I'd actually read any of the books, then I would, I would, I would be too emotionally invested. <laughs> I, 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 this stuff affects me too much. I'm too sensitive of the soul to have actually read the books yet. Um, though actually, spoiler alert, having, uh, watched, having watched, having listened to, actually I watched, listened to all this on pod, the podcast version of it. Uh, I'm actually quite really interested in reading uh, a good number of these books. So uh, hooray for Canada Reads uh, for doing this. So yes, let's start with day one. Canada Reads! I'm already behind. Uh, this is me reacting to day one of Canada Reads, where for, uh, I think, oh God, I think it's, it, they call it about the book that's going to transport us. Uh, there seems to be a theme of uh, we're all under the horrible stress of been under, under the horrible stress of COVID-19, uh, a lot of disruption in our lives, uh, a lot of um, kind of stress in our daily lives. We want a book that's going to transport us to another world um, in this one. So, yes, yes, we had um, the people kind of give their uh, give give their um pitches for the books they also had the uh the trailers for the books uh which i only i only listened to the audio from um you know i i pity the people who have to make the you know 60 second pitch for a book i pity the people who have to make uh engaging um book trailers for the book some people did a better job than others um in the at the end of the day uh it seems to have come it came down to two date trees make a forest and uh, the midnight bargain uh, as the ones like you know are the which you know which one of these is going to go we we sort of like two votes two votes on on both of those votes two votes on both of those uh, and so it was like a question of like you know what's going to what's going to uh, to get uh, turfed the fantasy novel midnight bargain uh, which is kind of um it it, it what was it it's it's wealthy, an annual event where wealthy young men, young men and women gather from all the world to make advantageous marriages. But the the problem with the marriages is once you get married, you're you basically as a woman, you're given you're you're given a collar and you don't get to pl practice magic anymore, which really sucks in a uh, sucks in a um, in a in a uh, in a society. But as obviously whoop, is obviously one of those metaphors for. Um, for our own patriarchal patriarchal society, uh, the other book that was definitely early on on the chopping block, well, it has been is in this thing of the two to two, is uh, Two Trees Make a Forest by Jessica J. Lee. 
uh, which is a nonfiction book, which is exploring how geographical forces are interlaced with family stories. And, you know, it's, it's, there's the, the author is sort of doing a combination memoir uh, with, uh, you know, letters from her immigrant father uh, to her ancestral homeland, Thailand, Taiwan, Taiwan, uh, but also just sort of the eye, crit, critical eye on our kind of political, our colonialist explorers who mapped the country named plants and both relied on and often erased the labor and knowledge of the local communities. And I have to say li me listening to the pitches and the book trailers for both. And it was like, uh, two trees at least sounded like this is, I have not read any of these books. I'm going to read one of them. I've got requested on my thing and probably good luck for me trying to get into the others it sounded like more of the two trees make a forest sounded a bit more like your oatmeal book it's you know it's about you know colonialism about the environment uh it's a non-fiction book um it had a you know a little bit kind of like uh that and some of the people who are kind of arguing against it in the thing was like they were engaged by the human story but all the descriptions of the um the, the 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 geography the landscape didn't engage them as didn't engage them as much and not surprisingly when it came down to it two trait two trees uh make a forest was eliminated now this is a book that has won the hillary weston writers trust prize for a non-fiction so you know it's it's like you know it's obviously probably quite it's 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 a it's an esteemed nonfiction book. It's like you know this is a sixty thousand dollar prize awarded you know annually to the best in Canadian nonfiction. It's the largest prize in Canadian nonfiction uh, in Canada. So the author's doing okay, and it uh, sounds like it might be an it might be an interesting book to pick up. But yeah, I could see why this was a book that was perhaps going to be a little bit more niche. And, you know, if, if you're looking for a book that's going to transport us, I mean, all these themes are kind of bullshit, but if you're going to look, look for a book that's going to appeal to the widest possible people, I can see why people might target this one, uh, right off the bat. Um, so yeah, so yeah, one down, um, three more to go, and then we'll have the final, final book that wins. Uh, I know that uh, watching my, uh, Michael the Poptimist, he was really big for uh, butter, honey, pig bread. Um, I don't know if I got a great feel for that book in this in this round of like of like you know why it's sort of like an interest. It, it should be it should be like kind of uh, an an interesting an interesting book. There is kind of the case with a lot of this stuff that especially the defenders are trying to make a case for why this book is worthy. Um, you know, which is, is maybe it's the unavoidable thing with Canada reads. It's, it's, it's all about what's going to be, what's going to be the most ennobling, what's going to be the most relevant. And those are usually things that I'm the least am interested in, uh, when it comes to a book, I, um, you know, I probably will be far more, it's like, okay, I read the first page. Is this readable? Is this engaging? If, if a book is that I will, I will take it over uh, a worthy book that is 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 kind of dry as dust and blah, um, you know. So uh, the 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 stuff for butter honey pig, um, you know, it, it's 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 the, this thing. It's a novel about two twin sis twin sisters um, and their mother who who believes that she was a spirit who's supposed to die as a small child. Uh, and by staying alive, she is cursing her family uh, and, you know, and appears to come true when uh, Kendi experiences something that tears the family apart and divides the twins for years. But when the three w women connect years later, they may, must confront their past and find forgiveness, which is like always like, you know, th those kind of descriptions. It's like, eh, it doesn't make me, doesn't make me excited about the book in the way that um, someone like Michael, the Poptimist, uh, enthusing about it, saying like, this is, wow, this is a great book, really, really engaged him. That, that actually excites me more, um, you know, uh, and, uh, and the kind of just the ideas of like, kind of the food involved in this butter, honey, pig bread book uh, does. Um, of the other ones, Hench. Uh, sounds kind of fun. It's definitely 
uh, a very much more genre science fiction kind of superhero-y, anti-superhero because this is henches and henchmen and somebody who's decided that like, you know, that superheroes are, um, are, are actually are more costly or more damaging to society than, than the good that they do. Uh, it does seem to me like maybe it's well executed, but it's not like a particularly a new idea in genre fiction of the whole thing of, of uh, the superhero not being the greatest thing. We've got the boys at the moment. We've had, we've had other, we've had other things on this, but maybe it's really well ed- executed, but it doesn't really have that kind of sense of novelty to me. Um, you know, Johnny Appleseed sounds really interesting of a uh, two spirit uh, in- indigenous uh, young man who leaves the reserve and becomes a cyber sex worker in the big city to make ends meet. Uh, it actually kind of sounds kind of like, oh, that sounds like a, like a really interesting, interesting world, something I wouldn't be actually, um, I wouldn't know about uh, from, for myself. Uh, it's, I think it's his, is his first, yeah, the first, he won it, he won an award for like, you know, the Amazon Canada first novel award and it was long listed for the Giller. So, you know, that's, those are, those are good signs for a thing. Uh, and, um. Yeah, I mean, I, and I guess I mentioned Midnight Bargain already. I think that's everybody. I think that is all. Um, you know, uh, as it goes, uh, when you when you listen to people defend books, it's it's then you're starting to just sort of more rate um, how good a defender you have, and whether that's going to make a difference, or if most people have made up their mind, or really are making up their minds through their readings of the books themselves. You're not really quite getting that. It's like a cooking show where you don't get to taste the food. I haven't tasted the books. I guess I could I could look at little excerpts from each book and 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 uh, and make me uh, make me think about what I think about them because they're probably all probably all books that I could find on like Kindle and get the download the sample of and and read that. That might be an interesting thought. All right, that's all I have to say now. I'm back in this uh, odd position for me uh, where I film at least of doing day two of Canada Reads uh, where. We've got um, last yes last yesterday yesterday uh, the uh, two trees make a forest by uh, Jessica J Lee uh, defended by uh, Scott Hellman was eliminated uh, as the first kind of uh, the first the first of the five things uh, the other ones being uh, the uh, butter honey pig bread by uh, Francesca Luis Ecuicia. A Hench by Natalie Zena Walshots, uh, Johnny Appleseed by Joshua Whitehead, uh, and uh, The Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk. And uh, actually, I really enjoyed this episode because uh, on the subject of Hench, uh, they actually, there was actually a good back and forth between, I think it was Scott Hellman uh, and the defender of the book, uh, Paul Sun, 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 Hun, Sun Hun Lee. Uh, about the book Hench, uh, in that uh, Hellman felt it was being uh, immoral, in that it was like there is no evil, evil, and there is no good. There's um, there's only gray, and he kind of took exception with exception to that, feeling that it was a book that wasn't really. Uh, uh, it should be a book that should kind of uplift. It's a book that should. Um, that should have a kind of a good, should have a moral center, I guess, is what he was charging with not having. So it was actually kind of a good back and forth. And it can, it just sort of, to me, it illuminated the idea of like, you know, how you can have a book like this and one person could see it as fun. Another person could see it as kind of an allegory for superheroes as like kind of corporations or police. And like, do they, is the amount of good they do uh, or the amount of benefit they bring society? Does that, is that outweighed by uh, the amount of damage that, that can also get done? The, um, the thing. So it was interesting that way, but also just the idea of like, no, I need, I need a positive, this for some people, a book needs to have a positive message and it needs to have a positive role model. Whereas another person uh, that might not be the main thing, or they might be like, well, uh, the reader should bring that to the book. Not necessarily the book has to impose that on the reader. So yeah, that, that was actually a really entertaining little interesting discussion that they had there, which, you know, I think it's like the best book club where you can have two people who can have different takes on the book because they're coming at it from different angles and, uh, you know, how a book can be just so different for one person versus another one. So I, I really actually that, that I enjoyed that. We had a bit of a book discussion there. 
Um, butter, honey, pig bread. I still feel like I haven't gotten kind of like a hold on the book. I mean, I haven't read any of these books, but I, it's like, it might be a little bit too complex of a book. The, they're actually, it's interesting. It's one of these books that did get that charge, which sometimes literary books do get in this, uh, of being too literary, of being too masterful in its writing. And it wasn't, didn't allow the reader, the, some of the, some of the, um, people reading it, uh, at least one person who was defending their own book. So trying to come up with excuses saying like, well, I never thought, never forgot that I was reading a book because the writing was so good, which, uh, <laughs> Uh, is, is an argument. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's something that kind of says that there are, um, things that sometimes things that become bestsellers are things that become bestsellers that only have like the barest skill of writing, but that it doesn't get in the way that it just smoothly slips through. I mean, some bestsellers to, to write a bestseller, sometimes you have to have that skill of being able to write a book that has no speed bumps in it whatsoever. It doesn't challenge anyone whatsoever on a language thing so that they can get just get this in mainline the story just injects right into the brain whereas if the language is a little bit more difficult if the techniques are a little bit more in your face and challenge the reader that can kind of bump people up but that's also just sort of different levels of readers i like my literary fiction um, i also like my genre fiction so and it depends on what mood i'm in for it um um johnny appleseed i don't know if we got particularly much uh i think there was just a sort of a thing of they felt like there wasn't enough drama in the book was 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 the charge that was le leveled against it this time uh and then the midnight bargain i think it kind of came down to again it's the idea of like it's a dystopia it felt like maybe it was it was um it was maybe thumping its message a little too hard um, and also just maybe that wasn't as interesting enough of a message, uh, the whole thing of the patriarchy. Uh, it's like, you know, Margaret Atwood c competed on, I don't think she competed on it for one of the Handmaid's Tales books, but I mean, it's a book that's been written a while ago that was a dystopia about a patriarchal system, um, which I don't know if that, 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 that is a fair comparison to make in this kind of fantasy. I, I, I wonder if this book is a little bit funner, more fun than, uh, what they've been able to get across in the thing uh fantasy ro fantasy romance is what i've heard it termed as by others but that hasn't really come up in this reading it's all been kind of the worthy oatmeal parts of it which in the end in the end they did the vote um midnight bargain by cl polk that got eliminated uh and so we are now down to we are now down to um Johnny Appleseed by Josh White Whitehead, Hench by Natalie Zena Walshots, and Butter Honey Pig by Francesca uh, uh, Ukuwesia. Ukuwesi? I'm going to have to really learn how. Learn my pronunciation! Dumbass white dude. Um, so, um, yeah, it, it's, down to, it's down to those three. It'll be interesting to see what's next. Hench is a bit of a genre book, so that might be. It's weakness is that it's too fun of a book. <laughs> Off a lot of times, a lot of times for uh, for uh, things like this, it does come down to what's the most worthy book, the book book that we're going to make all Canadians read. Which they're not. They're not. The majority of Canadians are not going to read any of these books. Um, but uh, I I know I'm going to read uh, Butter Honey Pig Bread because I've got it up uh, in the queue for library books. It'll be coming up uh, as a read for me. Uh, Hench might be a fun, I think it's funny. It's like, I look at them, but a honey pig I'm going to read because of the poptimist uh, re recommending it. Uh, Hench, I think I would read just because it sounds like it's a fun book. Johnny Appleseed sounds like kind of an interesting book. Definitely, uh, uh, you know, uh, trans, uh, transgendered character, a two, two, two spirited character. Uh, sounds like that would be like kind of just really interesting, uh, interesting read. Two trees make a forest. I mean, it, I, I would have to read the back of that. Nothing, nothing in the show has made me want to read it. Uh, the same thing with the Midnight Bargain by CL Polk. I'd have to learn more. Um, it's interesting that the two have got that have gotten eliminated so far are the ones that um, strictly on what the contestants have put forward uh, are the two ones that yeah, I wouldn't particularly be that as as interested to read. Now we're down to the three that oh, I actually would be interested in reading them. It's funny. It's like I hench is like it's a fun read, so maybe that's lower down on a priority for me than Johnny Appleseed and then obviously Butter Honey, 
Uh, Pig Bread is at the top of my list as uh, the book I'm going to read, even though I don't think that they've actually that that they've actually done a particularly good job of um, highlighting it, highlighting its strengths. It sounds like it's one of those books you should re be reading uh, lines from uh, to get kind of a sense of the language because it's a language book, and um, and maybe that would that would uh, light my fire there. But uh, I will get lots of words from that book because I'm going to be getting the audio book of it. All right. I will leave it there. That is Canada Reads Day 2. Actually, and I'm recording this on Day 3, so I can probably go listen to that now. And then I'll update you next. I'll update you tomorrow as I'm doing this for whatever goddamn reason. All right. More videos later. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, okay, keeping in my tradition of, at least my, <laughs> my two days before this tradition, of uh, doing Canada Reads. Uh, I watched Canada Reads Day 3, so we, had, we still had three books in contention, uh, both uh, Two Trees Make a Forest and uh, the, uh, oh, the Midnight, Midnight Decision, oh, the Polk book, uh, had been eliminated. And this, for this day, we had uh, Hench, we had uh, two, uh, Butter Honey Pig Bread, and uh, Johnny Appleseed up for contention. And um, sort of like yesterday, we had a good delivery of, you know, reader reactions to stuff because uh, <laughs> um, the actually the the uh, defender of Johnny Appleseed, uh, Devery, um raised the raised raised the words um trauma porn when talking about butter honey pig bread uh and immediately kind of retract tried to retract it immediately said like look that wasn't i shouldn't have used that words that was incorrect doesn't like apply to that but uh roger mooking definitely kind of uh saw saw his opportunity jumped jumped on those on those words uh and um kind of launched into a very kind of heartfelt thing about how you no know, trauma is real that uh you know this time of covid there's lots of stuff in his own personal life he has had plenty of trauma and this isn't trauma porn which is like it, it's a debate um and uh you can see him pushing his point forward you know, and at the same time, I think uh, the use of trauma porn, of saying something is trauma porn, um, to me at least, is that when uh, an author uh, uses uh, trauma uh, for in an, in in an, in a way that is to exploit the trauma, is a way of being disrespectful to very real trauma in the world. I think about my reaction to um, uh, it's like extremely close, uh, extremely loud and terribly close, or whatever the hell the name of the book is, the 9-11 book uh, by uh, Jonathan, uh, what's his name? I can't even remember his name. It doesn't matter. I, I had a really visceral reaction to that because I felt like the novelist was uh, exploiting uh, the trauma of 9-11 uh, using the grief of uh, a precocious, not particularly to me very um, believable child character to try and wring out kind of false tears for me uh, in, in making that, in, in doing that book. Uh, and, you know, I have, I've never, I haven't read Butter, Honey, Pig, Bread, and it doesn't sound like that. It, it is engaging in that, and that was a fatal flaw of 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 that of de de defender um, to to use that to give him a chance to kind of lay down, you know, trauma is real. Therefore, this book is this book is valid kind of thing. I um, I think books, if if in some ways, I think if you are a book that is dealing with trauma, it behooves you to be even even a better book, even to be um, more careful, to be more respectful in your in your in your use of it and this book perhaps has um there and there's also sort of personal taste of it's like you know certain people uh i i can get i can get overwhelmed by a story to the point where i can't hear the story anymore something is so awful so terrible uh either in the way it's told or in the way it's pushed at me that i shut down uh and it fails the book would fail to commu communicate to me that doesn't make uh the trauma behind it the very um the real life depictions any less valid 
It just means that this book as a communication device failed to failed to reach me, failed to reach me because I just wasn't able to do it. Now that could be a failure as me as a reader. Um, I don't think that an uh, an author necessarily uh, has to has to think about the, the the sensitivities of all the readers. You know, might not be targeting a book towards me. Um, it's interesting how many books that people will say like, look. Um, I'll say for like myself, suicide. You know, someone might say like, look, this book deals with suicide. If this is something that's really bothers you, really troubles you, it might be a book that you might want to take a pass on. Or someone might make a case of like, hey, you know what? This book deals with it in such a way that a thought, thoughtful, sensitive way that isn't going for those kind of cheap shots, isn't trying to, trying to, you know, traumatize you in the reading of it, that you could actually read this book on a, on a subject. Um, yeah, that's like, that would be a sensitive subject to me. Um, and so I think it's a valid, I think it's a valid criticism. It's a valid thing to flag up. Um, so yeah, that was a, that was a really interesting conversation they had. Uh, they are the kind of motioned towards in the debates there. It's like, that's another really good one, a really good little, little mini debate within Canada Reads, which I really enjoyed on this day three. Um, so yes, they had the clash and again, they had a tie. They had a tie between Hench and uh, Butter Honey Pig Bread, uh, two votes for each. And then they needed to do a tiebreaker, which, um, because of the, how the rules of the game go, uh, the people who had already voted for it couldn't, you know, cast, cast a vote for something else. So then it goes to, uh, the people who didn't vote for, for, for the book. And that turned out to be, uh, Roger Mooking, who was, uh, who who was um, uh, who who was uh, d a defender of butter honey pig bread? So he voted obviously for Hench, and Hench is out. And now we are bat we are down to the final two, that being butter honey pig bread and Johnny Appleseed. Which uh, it's interesting going forward. I've heard a lot of a lot of kind of people kind of reluctance on butter honey pig bread. I just got two votes uh, at this. At, in in this round um, of people not quite jibing with it, uh, whether you know whether it's because it's too too literary, got too much too much too much of the language, so it wasn't allowing people to, into it, or um, you know w wondering about maybe a passivity. I think passivity of the characters. You see, I haven't read any of these books. So, whereas Johnny Appleseed, for the most part, seems to have kind of been underneath the radar with a lot of the criticism. So it'll be interesting to see now that there is nowhere to hide how uh, Johnny Appleseed will fare with the contestants going forward. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's like, who cares who wins? I'm, I'm just, I'm here for the kind of the bookish discussions that they have and the bookish issues that come up, which uh, I think, I think actually I've, I've been fairly impressed with Canada Reads this year that um, it doesn't seem to be like, uh, what I would consider bullshit arguments <laughs> as a, you know, as a, as a inveterate book reader myself, uh, I'm not being, you know, being snobby. It's like, no, no, these are things that come up when you're reading a book at all, all the, all the time. So I've, I've been enjoying this. All right. More videos later. All right. Day four of Canada Reads, where we are down to Butter Honey Pig Bread by Francesca Ikowisi and Johnny Appleseed by Joshua Whitehead. Uh, two uh, LGBT, LGBT, LGBT plus books in the, in the final. Um, you know, uh, Two Spirits uh, with uh, Johnny Appleseed, uh, lesbian, I believe, with uh, Butter Honey Pig Bread. As I've said throughout this process, this is me going to, into this as sort of the pure, pure, purely as a contestant. I haven't read any of these books yet, though, hats off to Canada Reads. It's actually kind of made me uh, want to pick up some of these, pick up some of these books. Um, so yeah, so we had this head of head. Uh, there was a little bit of kind of a representation question uh, where um, it was kind of put forward that Johnny uh, Appleseed was maybe more of a positive book where there was, uh, there was, there was, there was actual kind of healing healing involved where uh you know it had a happy resolution which some of the panelists uh maybe were craving um whereas maybe with butter honey pig bread uh it was a bit more of 
this is the kind of the stuff that's happening and this stuff isn't necessarily going to get resolved isn't going to necessarily get resolved in the book and i mean i think that that can kind of come down to um you know it's another good reader readerly debate like what do you look for in books do you look for something in books where you're going to kind of come out of it you know feeling kind of a hope of kind of a representation uh, a hope that, that, that the hope that like there's going to be a better better future um or do you take comfort in the fact that ah i feel really seen here because uh this is sh kind of showing showing a life that's happening that is messy that um a lot of people you know even if you have little happy moments in your life uh you still kind of continue on with life and it's all its messiness and complications uh and i think there's a place for both kind of books uh, in our in our universe in our reading universe but it's interesting that you know that's one of these things of like when you're in this kind of weird artificial situation you know that all book prizes are like when you're pitting books against each other it's like which one of the which one of these is more important to you and i mean that's such a individual thing and the the, the panelists obviously had to come up with their own individual ind individual answers for that um and you know this was uh, definitely one of these things where it highlighted how personal books can be uh you know uh there was um is it was uh, the olympian uh rosie uh Ad adehi uh, who was uh, a champion actually of uh, the Midnight Bargain that had gotten uh, by C.L. Polk that had gotten eliminated. But she said uh, in, in her thing is like, wow, she really, really did uh, see some of herself reflected in butter, honey, pig, pig bread. Like that, she, there was a part of her experience that was kind of captured in that book. And that was really, really a powerful thing to her. Um, and uh, it was interesting, uh, Paul Sun Hung uh young lee uh was talking about how uh with johnny appleseed he didn't like the book the first time he read it uh that it um it really challenged him there was things that he didn't he really he he reacted back you know po poorly in that thing but that in the end that that book uh it sort of challenged him to kind of look at himself look at his biases look at his privileges uh and for that reason actually he'd come around to um really really enjoying that book and that that was that's one of those interesting things of you can read a book and not enjoy yourself through all of it and then find that book stuck in your head uh and continuing continuing to have conversations with it and understanding more about it and uh it changing you and that's that's such a powerful thing of of, of books you know um you know, for all the books that like, you know, oh, I read the first couple of pages and it wasn't resonating for me or I, 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 I took against it. That, that's kind of the argument for sometimes, sometimes, you know, not all the time, but sometimes it's like, OK, is why is why am I reacting poorly to a book? Is it the book or is it something in me? And is that something that's worth exploring? Because if it's something that's in yourself that you need to explore, that's that's such a interesting that's such a powerful thing of books that that books that art do that can art do to you um so yeah coming down to johnny appleseed maybe more of a character study of johnny appleseed the main character themselves or of uh, butter honey pig bread which seems like it sounds like a bit more of a group study about kind of kin uh, a, a wider scope um you know so yes, we had the final vote. We had the final vote, and in a, a deed again, uh, it really it really came down to the wire of the things. And it was really interesting that in the final in the final vote, the final deciding vote was from Paul's. You know how they structured it was from Paul, from Paul's son Hun Lee, who voted uh, against butter honey pig bread, voting for uh, Johnny Appleseed to win. So that was the winner of uh, Ca Canada Reads. Um, you know, which is like bragging rights for Johnny Appleseed. But uh, I think this, the key, I actually really enjoyed this this um, Canada Reads because there's sometimes that these things have been, that Canada Reads have been like, what's the most worthy book? I feel like I've, um, maybe it's me also probably because I'm paying more attention. I've paid more attention to it this time because I've got, got the, I, it was it was a fun project that I've fallen into that, um that they had all these kind of readerly debates, these issues that come up when you're reading and that uh, here on BookTube, we hear about a lot of the time of when people talk about books of like why they liked it or why they they felt it fell, sh fell short. You know, it's all the different individual personal things that we value. Uh, that's, this is like, you know, it's about values uh, that can, um, can really affect 
how you read a book, where you stand in a culture, what you value in a culture, uh, you know, but what you value in yourself, like what you need from a book. Do you need healing? Do you need um, kind of more of like the kind of the kinship of like, oh, you know, life is messy and it continues on. And uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, hats off to Canada Reads. Uh, really, really good year. Really good year. I really enjoyed all this, all these, uh, all the, all these, this four days of discussions. Um, and yeah, yeah, most definitely, um, you know, butter, honey, pig bread, as I've said, I'm going to be that one I'm going to be probably reading next. Johnny Appleseed, definitely. They made a really good case for why it's an interesting book. Hench, sounds like it's fun. I'm probably going to have to do a little bit more research into The Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk and Two Trees Make a Forest by Jessica uh, L.G. Uh, Lee, just because um, those books of the two, I, it's funnily enough, as, it go, as it's gone along, just watching it from like the contestants, I was really... I wasn't surprised at how at, the, at how things got eliminated. It it felt like it, it felt fairly organic. I mean, I mean, maybe that was just me reading the room cor uh, accurately of like you know how it, how it how things would end would shake up. So it wasn't like I was stunned by the results. I guess uh, um, uh, the optimist might be stunned. <laughs> he might be sad because uh, I know he, his his big favorite and he actually has read all the books was Butter Honey Pig Bread. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is the joy of actually not having read any of the books. I get to look at it from just a contestant point of view, but a contestant who's also a reader and, and loves these kind of conversations when they happen. All right. So I will leave it there. More videos later.